Hi, I'm James Orvis, and in this video, I'm going to do a track breakdown of the Electro Jam that I did the other day of a track called One and Zero. And I did it on the new Electron Syntax, and I also used the Fader Fox PC4 to open up modulations on the modulation wheels for each of the tracks and also the breath control. So, very cool stuff. I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. I'm going to go through the sound design of each of the tracks as well briefly. And I think the juicy part really is how the Fader Fox is opening the sounds. I think that's a really cool aspect of this. And I'm glad that I went ahead and bought one and married it up with the Syntax because these two together is just the best duo. And I think if you have the Syntax or plan on buying one, go and get a MIDI controller for it and try out this technique. So let's get stuck in. I'm going to start with the kick drum because that seems like the best place to start. So let's go ahead and do that. For the kick drum, I'm actually using the analog bass drum. So this is on number nine here. Let's just have a listen to it first. So you'll notice just by listening that it's quite quite pounding. It's, it's a good distorted electro track. I'm very into Jensen Interceptor, Boys Noise, Lot Club those kind of acts that do really like gnarly electro. So I wanted to do that with this kick. And the way that I did that was basically just by boosting that overdrive there. You can see I've added quite a bit of snap in and also the decay is quite open. So that's giving me that long electro kick drum sound. The wave I've left on this one, I did test out a couple of the other waves. I much preferred uh, the zero. So this sine wave here holds up quite a lot. And then I haven't got much tick going on there. So a fairly basic setup there on the machine page. But what's giving it a very distinct character is also the filter page as well. So you can see the cutoff, I bring that down quite a bit. And then I've also got the envelope open with a little bit of decay. So that just means that filter envelope is opening and closing like this. And if I bring up the resonance a little bit more, you can see I've got it at nine. Just turn that one off. hear that moving the filter if i open it there's no movement there so i'm just gonna reload this uh, patch and that's gonna bring all these back online so i'm just gonna turn them off see so yeah, i've got that going on with the filter the amp section you can see i've done a bit of extra shaping for the volume so a little bit of decay then the sustain and also a little bit of release at the end there and then not doing anything with the LFOs. But another key aspect of this kick is the way it works with the bass. So if we look at the tricks, you can see I've got a kick on the 1, 2, 8, 11, and 15. And then if we go to the bass sound, you can see that it works in between. But what I've done is I have used the lengths. So you can see the lengths here. If we click on a few of these, like that one there, you can see the length is free. So it allows the bass drum to carry over three trigs before the bass comes in on the 14. So have a listen to what that sounds like when it gets to 11. It's like a longer bass drum. So you get these short elements and then when it gets to 11, it's like boom, you get this long one. So what I might do next actually is bring the bass in and then you can hear the relationship between the two. So let's have a listen to that. going to open it up actually on here and I'll talk about these in a second so you can hear the kick and the bass work together really nicely there's no massive overlaps that are just muddying up the mix and that's because I did the trick where I cut the kick before the bass comes in and I cut the bass before the kick comes in so if you look on the tricks for the bass you can see some of these have got the same setup so the length on four is free so one two three and then it doesn't really matter with that one actually because it has actually got a bass on the seven uh, that one's a one eighth and that's just so when the kick comes in so if we go to the kick you can see the kick comes in there and it's not going to overlap so it's a really cool little trick and i recommend doing that just to kind of give you a more professional sound the next thing i want to show you actually is just how i made the bass I've only just got this, so I'm still trying to memorize the names of all of the machines. But you can see here, um, dual VCO. So it's a nice little analog synth machine. And what I've done here is with the config, if I just change this. So I put it on 63. 
So because I've only just got this machine, and I am going to do some tutorials in it that go a little bit deeper, the config I've not looked at what each of these are. I do know that they're oscillator setups, and they have some elements in there like FM and things like that. So the way that the oscillators modulate each other, that's as far as I have got to at this point. So I'm going to memorize them, and then I can let you know what they are. But I just scrolled through until um, I found something that I liked, and 63 seemed right. And you'll hear that if I move the, the detune of one of the oscillators, you can hear that. I'm guessing it's frequency modulation. You can hear that frequency modulation there. So I'm just going to press function and bring it back to 12. Nope, I've got it on a fifth, so a seven. Um, there's no bend on this, and then the decays have left them as they are. With the balance, you can see I'm not using that other oscillator. I'm just using the first one. Plenty of overdrive there. And then filter, same trick as with the kick. I have the filter opening and closing. So I've got some envelope there with a bit of decay. Um, there's no effects on this, but when I open this knob here, I can add a bit of delay and reverb, which we'll get onto in a second. And then with the LFO, there's nothing going on there. With the trigs, I'll just quickly go through them. So what I've done with the trigs is I've just tuned a few of them. So they're all on the root note. This one goes to G. That one, C sharp, uh, C, C, and C for them. But then if we go to the second page, we have a little fill going on here. So we go to a high note there, A sharp. And then we'll take a look actually at the, let me just come back. I need to go into sound setup. We'll take a look at what I've done with the modulation wheel. So the way that I've mapped this, and I will do a deeper tutorial on how to set this up, but the way that I've mapped it is with the mod wheel, um, one knob controls the mod wheel for each track, and the other knob below it controls the breath controller. And for each of these, you can see that I can open up four different parameters. So I've got four macros there, and on that one, I'm opening up the reverb and the delay with this one here. So let's have a listen to that. And if we come back out and go to the modulation wheel, you can see we're opening up the filter envelope and also the filter decay. So a lot of room there for shaping the sound as the track develops. And the way that I've got these set up, just briefly, is that they go in pairs. So track one, track two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So it's a perfect little MIDI controller because it's got the right amount of knobs for the syntax if you want to use two. Now, you could go further and get another one of these or you can get the bigger one. I think it's called the PC-12. could get that and maybe you could also open up um, pitch bend, velocity mod, modulation wheel, breath controller, and also aftertouch. So there's a lot to do there. It's pretty cool, but... I'm happy with this. I'm just going to use two per sound, and that's enough for a live performance anymore. It starts getting a little bit crazy. So, yeah, we've gone through the kick and the bass. And I can be super expressive with just that bass there. So I really like playing around with that. Um, what we'll do next is I'll bring in the snare, very key part of the electro sound. So... I'll speed this section up a little bit. I won't go too much into the design of these because it's pretty basic, straightforward stuff. I'm using SD Vintage Machine, which is a great little snare drum. This is going to sound crazy because I bought the Syntax, um, but I've never really been into synthesized drum sounds as much as using samples like on the Digitact. And I was a bit wary of this when I bought the Syntax. I was like, oh, am I going to like it? Is it going to need loads of processing and compression and overdrive? But... I was quite happy to find that it doesn't need much at all. Just a bit of drive on the tracks. Um, the machines, the digital machines sound great. The analog machines sound great. My only gripe really is, um, but this is with all synthesized drums, hats I'm not too bothered about. They don't give me what I'm looking for, but then the Digitats um, gives me that. So what I mean by that is 808, 909 style, um, swooshy kind of rides and hats like, the syntax isn't great at that, but what the syntax does better is give you 
really cool modular it sounds. So just as a quick example, um, that one actually. So I've got a noise there. That's my hat for this track. So you can get away with it and you can kind of be a bit creative. And there's some other tracks I'm going to show you as well in other videos where I have created a hat sound but then i've got loads of modulations going on so it becomes like this synthesized hat that just has a little bit more to it than a normal hat sound but yeah normal stock hat sounds i would recommend you know using the digitax or something else so let's have a listen to this so yeah snare drum quite basic setup there i won't go too much into it uh, i'm not doing much on that but i've got a lot of overdrive on there bit of reverb and the other cool thing with this is let's just come out of this and look at the trigs so you'll notice that i've got all of the trigs on but you can only hear the um five and the 13 and that's because i've set page up to be snare fills and the way you do that is you hold the trig down and you just change it to fill so normally it'll be like this and then you just change it to fill then whenever you press that it will um, engage those tricks so it's quite cool because then you can it's always in time as well now i know that we've got the retrig options now on the syntax which are pretty cool what i have noticed they're out of time and i'm not that good at playing so for me going with the trusty old filler um, let's take a look at the trigs again because there's some other cool stuff for this that I did. Um, you can see that we've got this number 13's flashing and that's because on some of the hits, so like on 13, I increase the delay. And also on this one, I increase it a little bit more. So if you listen out for the snares... So you can hear this kind of like bouncing and then the last ones it like opens up quite a lot with that um, delay there so the delay itself it's got quite a short time i'm on 164 put it on panning so it's super wide and also opened up the width as well and a bit of feedback and it just gives it this nice kind of stereo sound so i'm using that across the whole project on different sounds and um, let's also just take a look at what i'm doing on the snare with the modulation wheel. So modulation wheel, you can see it opens up the synth decay and also the amp reverb as well. Now this is great because it gives the track a little bit more oomph later on. So I keep it quite snappy. And then when the track's developing and I want it to go like a little bit more aggressive, I just open up that snare like this, the decay. And then we've also got the breath control, so let's have a look at that. I don't think I did anything with this, actually. So, yeah, I left this one, but it's open. You know, I could use that for something. Maybe I want to add a little bit more reverb or delay with a knob. Could potentially do that. Let's next take a look at the noise. So we can get that groove going. And let's just start with the mod wheel and breath control and take a look at that. So, synth decay. And then with the breath control, bringing up the delay. And then I was going to bring it reverb, but I didn't in the end. So you can hear that. It just adds a little bit of 164 uh, delay feedback and just gives it that spread. Again, just something that I can open up later on to make it more aggressive. This can be quite expressive. Along with the bass. It's a good one to open as well when you take the kick out. And then snap it back to kind of make it more groovy so yeah i really like that it's simple i'm not going to go through it too much but it's basically just the ut noise machine um just a basic noise really i really like the sound of noise though um especially for electro i think it sounds great 
So yeah, just an analog noise and then a bit of delay, a bit of reverb. And then I do this quite a lot actually with hats. So you can see I've got panning. And then if you put this into a random wave shape and change the mode to this one so it starts with every trig and then slow it right down, it means that every trig is going to have a different depth amount. So every time it hits, the panning is slightly different. Let me just open this up to show you. If you've got headphones on or good monitors, you'll be able to hear that panning around uh, the stereo field. So let's just bring that back down. So that's the noise. And then what should we look at next? Let's have a think, maybe this one. So it's like a nice little electro zap. Just to add a bit more groove. Let's take a deeper look at this one. So for this one, I'm using bass drum modern. This is what I like about the syntax. You end up using stuff for other reasons. So you explore it and you're like, oh, that sounds pretty cool. I'll use that. Um, so yeah, it's BD modern. And then you can see some of these are shifted round. So we've got triangle mod and S mod and I've just adjusted them. So 57 on that, 64 on that one. Again, a little bit of overdrive. And then filters not doing much. And then with this, I've adjusted it so, again, random wave. I love using random wave. Each hit has a little bit of a different delay amount just to give it some movement to make it sound a little bit more organic. So let's have a look at the, the modulation wheel settings for this sound. So going here, you can see we've got synth tune as I open this up. Changes the tune. Again, another cool one to be expressive with. And you can also see adds a little bit more delay in there and opens up the synth decay as well. The next one is the breath controller. Uh, quite simple. Just adding more reverb to it. And then let's have a look at this one here. So this sound is just a bit of a, a tonal sound that goes along with the zap and the hats, or the noise hat. Let's have a deeper look at this. So this one is the SY Bits one. So this is really good for like chip tune and stuff, but I kind of like the sound because you've got uh, bit reduction and also um, sample rate reduction as well. Obviously with the overdrive, you can get some really nice sounds out of it. This is a fairly simple sound though. I'm not using too much of that, but you can hear the kind of sound that sample rate and bit reduction gives you. And then with this, not doing any filler in it. It's quite a simple little sound, to be honest. Let's take a look at the mod wheel. So simple, just a bit of decay. Bit of simplicity with this goes a long way, especially when you just start being expressive with the knobs. And then we've also got breath controller, which adds a bit of delay in there. But with these knobs, I can These two together is the best purchase yet. Um, I love my Octatrack, love my Digitats, love the Hydrosyn for performing live. Haven't performed live with this yet, but it's going to be really fun. I just know it. Um, I've been wanting something like this for a long time. So next we'll take a look at track four, which is a cool little Mario coin sound. I didn't make this. It was actually in the sound browser. So one thing I love about the sound browser on the Syntax is that Electron have packed it full of really usable sounds. So if you press function and sound, go into the sound browser, you can see not just one bank, not two, not three, not four, but five, yeah, five banks of sounds. There's tons of stuff in there. Um, for my effects and the coin sound, I did use quite a lot of presets just because I wanted to um, just get some ideas of what it's capable of without me sitting there for hours trying to come up with effect sounds. So yeah, I just wanted to have a browse for them, found some stuff that was really usable. So I got this coin sound, which I thought was pretty uh, cool. Not something I'd normally put in a track like this, um, but I'm going to start doing it more, like a little chip tune sound. Pretty cool. So you got to wait for it to come in. Yeah. 
coming in in a second. I love it. A little bit geeky, but I love it, right? Let's take a look at what else we've got then. So the next one I want to talk about is the effects. So what I'll do actually, I'll just play them. So got this sound. Which is pretty cool. This one. That was also um, on, I think, Bank B or C. There's like at the bottom, there's some chip tune style stuff. That's another one of them. So they're probably made by the same person. Um, there's some stuff in there that reminded me of like Streets of Rage as well, so I'm definitely going to use them, like the jump sound in Streets of Rage. And then that one on 8 as well. So these were stock uh, sounds and I thought they were very usable. And then the last thing I want to show you is the chord. So this is one I made myself, so let's have a listen to this. Just turn these off. So with this, we are using the uh, synth machine, the chord machine. So what I love about this um, synth is that you've got 12 tracks. You could make them all into some sort of synth if you wanted to. But I love the fact that we've got these chord machines as well. So a lot of people are complaining that the syntax isn't a polysynth. And to be honest, I personally don't really care. Like I'll go and buy a polysynth if I want to make pad sounds and have 16 voices at once but the kind of music i make like this is just perfect have individual sounds layer them together make an orchestration that way but i love the fact that it's got a chord machine in there and with the chord machine you can see i've gone for a minor change the wave and it's kind of it's wavetable as well so you actually get wavetable you could have eight wavetable machines with chords if you wanted to so i don't know why people are complaining there's just just use it for what it is look at its limitations Look at its good points and just use it for that. It's a brilliant machine. I think it's one of the best things that Electron have made, to be honest. So yeah, we've got this cool little chord. And I'm using that classic Detroit style technique. Um, the old Sims back then, they used to have basically these like little chord machines on them. And people would just play one note at a time. And that's how you get that classic Detroit sound. So yeah, it's using minor chords. Obviously adjusted the type and the balance there as well. I'll show you what that sounds like, actually. So you can change the chord. You can change the chord and oscillate balance. I mean, like, what else do you want, really? It's a polysynth. <laughs> I know it's not an actual polysynth, but it'll do. It sounds ace. Like, use two tracks with chords on, if you want to, and make an even bigger sound. Um, but I love... In fact, you can select all these waves. You could modulate that as well, which I think I'm doing a little bit of. So let me just reset this. And let's take a look at how I'm getting that kind of like ghostly sound. So if we go to the LFO, I'm using a very slight amount. So 0 0.76 of tuning. And when I stop it, you can hear it moving like that. It sounds so nice. Um, but yeah, I've used a speed that is not synced, so 7.8. So it's just a little bit off and it's always different and it's a slow speed. And then we have also got on LFO 2. I'm not using that, am I? Yeah, just a little bit of um, the wave. So you know the wave here, the wave table. I'm basically just modulating that very slightly as well, so just to give it some movement. And again, it's offset. So this one I've gone for 16.75 and I wanted to make sure it was different speed to that as well so it always sounds different and it kind of just merges like that let's take a look at what i've got going on with going to the wrong one still getting used to this thing but I'm getting there it's quite familiar actually because it's like the digitax in a lot of ways so let's have a look at the chord which is on five filter frequency and amp um reverb so i'm sending it to the reverb and then i don't think i'm doing anything for breath control but with a little bit more patience and programming i'll probably add something to that as well for when i play this out live and then that's pretty much it for the sound so what i want to do now is just show you the different patterns and the way that i've got them set up so when i play live i save each of the patterns in a song i save them 
to have certain um, setups with the mutes. So when you go on the purple mutes, I can't remember the actual name of them, but when you go on them, you can save a setup. So if I go like that and then press yes, it means that if I press reload, it brings it back to where it was. So what you could do is when you switch to a different pattern, you can have it ready in a certain setup. So for this one, all the tracks are playing. Watch what happens when I go to seven. So they turn off, seven turns off, and then I can start to open up the synth. And then bring these in. Bit of bass there. And then I can like start to build that up. And then when I'm ready, go to eight. And watch what happens when I go to eight. It's turned that off. And it's turned a few of the others off as well. And then I can start to prepare it ready to drop into the, um, the drop on six. So yeah, I'm able to basically work around it that way. I've only got two hands. I've already got a lot of stuff going on with the knobs and doing fills. And also eventually when I put this together with the auto track and the hydrosynth and the digitats, I've got way too much going on. So it's nice to have another bandmate there just sorting the mutes out for me. That's the way I like to see it. Um, so yeah, with that, one other thing that I want to mention that I really like is the modulation and the decay of the synth sound. When it goes into the next part, it carries on going, so it hangs, but then you get this nice kind of wobbling going on, so listen. And it sounds really cinematic because it kind of like detunes. So that's pretty much it for this breakdown, and I will be doing a few more of these in the future. So on the syntax again with the Fader Fox, and also the other bits from my live set using the Ops Track, the Digitact, the Hydrosynth, also the Collider pedal as well, and the TD3. Yes, I do own a Behringer TD3. I'm sorry, everyone. Um, I couldn't afford a real one because I spent it on the Syntax, so I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, so we're going to do breakdowns on those. And also in the future as well, I'll do some more technical breakdowns and setups of how to get a Fader Fox working with the Syntax, how to set up the MIDI CCs with the editor, ready to be able to use with a modulation wheel and also the breath control. So my name is James Orvis. Hope you've enjoyed this. Make sure you subscribe to keep up to date with what I'm doing and I'll see you in the next video.